printers. So on the uh, part one exam, there is 11% of the questions that are come from printers, and they're all going to be included in this particular uh, lecture. So for printers, we have to understand the four types of printers that we have. The first one we're going to talk about is laser printers, which are extremely common in a business environment. They have some of the lowest cost per page printing out there. Uh, laser printers, they're what we call a page printer. So when I go to print from my laptop, the entire page that I'm going to print has to be sent to the printer first, and then it's, it's printed out. When you use something like an inkjet, which is what you're probably used to at home, it does it line by line. That's called a line printer. So with these, it has to send the entire page, stores it in memory at the printer, and then it prints out the page. Some of the components we have in there is the imaging drum, which applies the image to the roller, the fuser assembly, which is going to actually burn the image onto the page by melting the toner to it. Uh, we have a transfer belt and roller, which is going to transfer the image from the drum to the paper, and I'll show you an internal picture of this in a second. Uh, pickup rollers, which is actually going to pick up the paper from the tray and feed it through the machine. The paper separator pad, make sure that the roller only picks up a single sheet. This often fails and you get paper jams. And you have what's called a duplexing assembly. And duplexing is really nice because it allows you to print on both sides of the paper without having to take the page out and flip it over. So my particular printer at home, I got one that has duplexing because when I print out stuff, I like to print on both sides of the paper because it's better for the environment, right? And I'm too lazy to have to pull out all the pages and feed it back in. So this way it goes, it prints on one side, sucks it back in, prints it on the other side, and then spits out the paper. So the toner and the drum. The toner cartridges are what we kind of refer to as the ink for laser printers. It's actually not ink. It's dry powder. Okay? Um, usually the drum is combined with the toner cartridge in one replaceable unit. And these can be expensive to replace, generally about $50 to $100 each but they last a long time. They can last 2,500 to 5,000 pages or more. When you compare that to an inkjet, you're paying, what, $25 to $50 for an inkjet cartridge, um, and it may last 1,000 pages, right? So these are actually very efficient from a business standpoint. And what ends up happening is we actually have a high voltage power source in the laser printer. It's going to negatively charge this thing called the corona wire. That's going to charge the drum negatively, and so all these negative ions go on to the drum. And basically when we use the laser, that's why it's called a laser printer, it's going to positively charge certain areas of the drum to make the image that we want. So in this case we have this like W looking thing. Um, as it does that, all those negative ions are going to attract the toner to it. Or excuse me, they're not going to attract the toner because they're negative. So the places that the positive, in this case where you see the green is, is where we're going to end up having the toner attracted to on the drum. The drum is then rolled against the paper, and the toner is on the paper. It then goes through the fuser that melts it onto the paper. And I'll show you a picture of that again in the next slide here. So as you can see here, here's the seven steps of what we call the electrophotographic process, which is laser printing process. First we send the data in. The laser is going to go over, bounce off this mirror onto the drum, and positively charge those certain sections of the drum. That's part of the processing and the conditioning. At that point, we're exposing the laser onto the drum to give that positive charge. At that point, we go to developing, which is when the toner is going to roll onto this drum, so this green drum here in the center. Then the paper is being picked up by the paper separation pad and the pickup rollers and rolled underneath the drum where the toner is transferred onto the page. The page then goes through the fuser in step six, then where it melts it onto the paper, and then the paper is then cleaned off and sent back out for us and any of the excess toner is cleaned off of the drum and recycled or thrown away. That's why when the paper comes out of a laser printer, you pick it up, it feels hot because it just went through this melting process of this plasticky um, toner, this, this dry toner getting melted onto your paper. Second kind of uh, printer we're going to talk about is inkjets, which is very popular in small office, home office environments. It's what you guys probably have at your house. Um, they do a very good job of doing color and black and white. Uh, the way it works is it uses sprays to control dots of ink to go onto the page to form images. And it does this line by line. So this is a line printer, not a page printer. Okay? And so what ends up happening is you use separate colors for each cartridge generally, um, or you might have one that uses all the cartridges in one. Um, I personally like the separate cartridges better. And the reason why is not all colors are used equally when you print, right? 
And so if you have one that has all of, the, all of them in one cartridge and you use a lot of blue, you might have full red still in there, or excuse me, cyan, uh, you might still have full magenta in there, but all your cyan is gone. You still have to throw it away and get a new one. Where if you use a printer like this one where you have different colors for each one, you only have to replace that one cartridge. Um, the way this works, again, it's going to get the data in through USB generally. The page is going to be picked up. The cartridge is going to go back and forth across the page, printing as it goes with those dots. What it does is it actually heats up the ink inside these cartridges to the point where they're boiling and then opens up a little nozzle that sprays out these tiny little dots onto the page paper. For that reason, the first one inkjets of these were actually called bubble jet and they were made by Canon uh, because they were um, basically they bubbled up the ink onto the page. Now we call them inkjet because we're spraying ink through these jets. So again, the paper is going to be pulled into the machine. The print head is going to move across the page on the belt. Each time it goes across the page, the belt is going to pull the paper up one more line. It's going to go and print again, and it's going to continue doing that until the whole page is printed. Once it's done, the page will be ejected. The third type of printer we're going to talk about is called a thermal printer. And if you're dealing with business support, you're going to see thermal printers all the time. If you went to lunch today at Subway or McDonald's, and you got your receipt, that was a thermal printer that gave it to you, right? They use heat transfer to make the image. So it uses special paper that when exposed to heat, it actually turns black in those spots. So this was very useful in photo printing. Most commonly though, we use it for receipts. So what happens is your print head heats up a series of dots to make up the image. The print head goes across the paper, giving it thermal, thermal transfer onto that paper. Any place that it gets heat is going to show up as black. If you have multicolor, each color is applied separately, so it'll have to go over three or four times. And once complete, the paper is ejected. Uh, if you've ever noticed with these type of receipts, if you leave them in your car in the summertime, if you ever left like a Best Buy receipt or McDonald's receipt in your car on the dashboard, you come back and the entire receipt is black because of the heat. If it gets too hot, that's because of the thermal paper will react to the heat. Okay, And that's what we're using in this is, is trying to make thermal reactions. The last one we're going to talk about is an impact printer. In the old days, we used to call this a dot matrix printer. Um, but the reason why you call it impact is because it actually is hitting the paper, like an old typewriter. Okay? Um, it's a mechanical print head that presses an inked ribbon against the paper. It does this like an old typewriter, but instead of using like an A character, it actually uses dots to make up the A's or B's or the graphics. And so this, again, is another line printer. It's going to go line by line, pulling it through the printer. As the print head goes across the belt, it's going to impact the ribbon with these series of dots to make the image it's looking for. As it moves up, that, ink, that ribbon will also advance so that it doesn't get dry. Um, it gives it fresh ink as it keeps going. And once done, the paper will be ejected as well. Um, not very commonly used anymore. Why do you think we would still use this in some cases? Exactly, carbon copy, right? You go to the auto mechanic, he prints out on something on this. It's a three-part copy. It says sign hard. It goes through all three copies, right? Otherwise, if you're using an inkjet, that won't go through carbon copy, right? Laser printers won't go through carbon copy. So what's happened is most of the newer software has upgraded, and you have to actually print out three copies and sign three times. With the older style inkjets, like, uh, excuse me, the older style impact printers like this, you could print it once, and because of that impact, it'll go through all three copies for you. Uh, if you go buy a car, generally they still have these old machines doing that. It's a very limited market now, but it's all based on carbon copy use. So how do we install and configure our printers? Well, the easiest way is we install it using a cable, right? Uh, we can use a printer cable, which is a 25 pin, which is the old style, or nowadays we use USB pretty much for everything. Once you install it, you also need to install the drivers in Windows. And we'll, we'll talk about and show you how to do driver installation when we get to Windows next week. Additionally, if you have a laser printer, again, we said this is a page printer, right? It has to get the entire image to the printer first you may need more memory inside that printer. So you can actually upgrade the memory in a laser printer so it can print more pages at a time or faster. Especially if you have a large graphic that's failing to print, more memory may be the answer. Um, upgrading your firmware. Sometimes you need to upgrade the firmware on these printer devices, especially network devices. For instance, we have a laser printer in the back of the room. It's on the network. If there's a security bug that comes out and hackers figure out a way to get into our network through our printer, HP would then give us a, would release a bug fix with a firmware update that we can upgrade the operating system on it. 
How do we connect printers? Lots of different ways. We can do it for any of the types of cables we've talked about so far. USB, parallel, serial, SCSI, Bluetooth, infrared, wireless networking, over the network with Ethernet, or even Firewire. What's the most common? Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, USB, and Ethernet now. Those are going to be the ones you see most often. Um, if you have an older style printer, like a USB only printer, you want to hook up to your network, you can buy what's called a mini print server, which I show you here, um, where you can actually plug it in USB on one end and it'll be Wi-Fi on the other. And now it'll be on your network so anyone can print from any computer in the house. So print drivers. Um, when you install a printer, you have to install software that goes with it to convert the data to be printed into usable information for that specific printer. Windows knows how to do it for some basic printers, but not for all printers. And so when you buy a brand new printer, Windows doesn't know how to do it, so you're going to have to install that driver. The drivers usually come on a disk when you buy the printer, or you can download it from their website. The picture here is an example of going to an Epson website to download a particular driver for that particular model printer, uh, which is a stylus printer. <coughs> Uh, the printer drivers allow the applications to do the printing without having to be aware of the specific details of that particular model. It's Epson's problem to figure out how to print that image, not Microsoft Word's, right? And that's what drivers allow us to do. To install them, you want to use the manufacturer's installation program, or you're going to use the Add Printer Wizard and click on the Have Disk option in Windows. And again, I'll show you guys how to do that in Windows when we get to Windows next week. To remove them, we'll go into the Device Manager, which again is inside of Windows. Um, and remove any, or we can remove them through the add or remove programs or programs and features under Windows as well. So printer properties. Uh, the printer property dialog box contains various different tabs that allow us to configure the printer. We could share it on the network or even create and delete a printer spool. An example of that is if you go to your printer and right click and go to properties, you'll see on the right here for this Canon inkjet printer all the different tabs we have available. We have general, sharing if we want to share it on the network, the different ports to say how it's configured, advanced settings, we could set up the color management, or even the device settings. We also have security, and with security we can actually give permission to a group of users for this printer. Maybe I only want to allow all you guys as students to be able to print to this printer, so I can add you guys to the allow print. For me, I'm going to allow, I'm going to allow myself to manage the documents on it, so let's say that um, Sarah went and printed out a 200-page book, and I see that she's like clogging up the printer queue. I can go and manage that document and cancel it by being able to do that. So I can start or stop or delete the documents. As the administrator, I also would have the ability to manage the printer. So I can do things like change the print quality, the user permissions, and more. Maybe I have a printer like an inkjet, and I set it up to be draft mode only to save on ink, right? But I allow maybe the two Nicks in the class, they have the ability to manage the printer so that they can go to high quality for their documents, but everybody else has to use draft mode. Those are things you can do with the Manage This Printer. And you can do that based on groups, which is how you see it done here, administrators, everyone, or owners. Or I can do it by specific people and say, okay, Charles, you can do this, but um, you know, Joseph can only do this. And so that, that's why you can do permissions. We'll talk a lot more about permissions when we get to security next week. Another thing we can do is we can manage our print server using print server management. So we want to share our printer on the network so that we can reduce the amount of physical hardware we need. Like we have seven people in this room right now, we don't want to have to have seven printers. One printer will work just fine for all of us. And so we have one printer that we're sharing. It allows us to minimize the amount of hardware required to perform our printing functions. This way, not everybody needs their own printer. It's less costly for us and less support for us as administrators. And you'll do that through the sharing tab. You'll hit share this printer, give it a name, and then you can render the print jobs on their machines or on a central machine, and you can list it in the directory so other people can find it. Printer spooling. So a print spooler is actually a service, a piece of software that operates as part of Windows. Its function is to help order the print jobs that interact with the printer. So for instance, we have seven of us in here and we're all trying to print to the same printer. Who's going to get to print to it first? The spooler will help determine that. And if, like, I started printing and Nicholas wants to print, his spooler is going to actually hold it in queue until my job is done and then send it to the printer. That's all a spooler does for us. Uh, if the spooler stops working or it has an error or another problem, it can actually stick the print jobs in the queue and they get stuck to the point where nobody else can print. 
So if my computer is printing and it jams up the printer, you're all going to be stuck waiting until I fix it. Um, and you can see here, when you click on the printer, this document called test is printing. It's working just fine. If it said stopped, it would hold up the queue for everybody else. Printer maintenance. So if, with our printers, we also have to do our maintenance on our printers. For inkjets and toner and uh, laser printers, we have to change out the ink or the toner cartridges, right? That's usually a fairly simple process. You turn off the printer, uh, you take out the, the cartridge, and you put in the new one. For laser printers, you can actually buy what's called a maintenance kit. And in these maintenance kits, they have fusers, transfer rollers, and drums that can be replaced at certain intervals. It allows us to provide parts for this kit so that we can use them over and over again. And that way we can get more life out of these laser printers. Because a lot of times these laser printers are very expensive. With the inkjet printers, it generally they're low enough cost that we just replace the unit as opposed to doing maintenance on them. With laser printers, they actually have a function on there where they have a counter of how many pages they went through. And so we kind of use it like miles on your car so we know when we need an oil change. It's the same kind of idea. Every 5,000 pages, we're going to replace the rollers. Every 10,000 pages, we'll replace the drum, something like that. Um, and so once we do our maintenance, we'll go ahead and reset that page count so we know, okay, we zeroed it out, we're ready to go for the next 3,000 miles, right? Uh, calibration. We want to do calibration on our printers to make sure that we have the best images possible. This is very common with inkjet printers especially to make sure the lines are actually lined up properly. Uh, cleaning. Sometimes your inkjet printers, the nozzles will actually get clogged up. So you'll run it through what's called the cleaning mode where it actually overpressures the uh, ink in there to push out any of the gunk that can build up and clean those nozzles so that it gets a better, a better picture. Uh, same thing with this nozzle check and head cleaning with inkjets, same kind of idea of that cleaning. Um, with the cleaning sheets that we were talking about, that's for a laser printer where we can actually put through a special sheet of paper through it that attracts all the leftover toner that's left in the machine and kind of clean it out for you. Uh, for thermal printers, you've got to clean those heating elements. That print head that heats up, if it gets gunky, you're going to have mistypes and misprints. So you want to clean that out on those receipt printers. And the last thing is for in inkjet printer, or excuse me, for impact printers like dot matrix, because they are hitting to create their image, the print head itself can get worn down. And so you can actually unscrew the print head and put a new one on to give it a nice new uh, print head ready to go. So if you're a technician and you're diagnosing a uh, laser printer that is having issues picking up paper from the first tray, what part do you think you need to fix? The toner, the transfer belt, the roller, or the imaging drum? What picks up the paper? Yeah, the roller. The rollers pick up the paper, right? So we have that... that paper separator that makes sure only one is picked up and then the roller picks up the paper from the tray and feeds it through the machine. Good.